What's up, Taiwan? I'm Erica Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan will open a new representative office in Montreal, Canada. The foreign ministry says that the establishment of the new office will, quote, further cooperation with exchanges between the two countries. It did not say when the office would officially open. This will be Taiwan's fourth representative office in the North American country. The FIFA World Cup may be over, but Taiwan's textile firms have scored with extra orders for replica national team shirts. Argentina's dramatic win in Sunday's final has seen a surge in demand for the team's blue and white striped jerseys, especially the number 10 shirt worn by the best player of the tournament, Lionel Messi. Taiwanese textile giant Far Eastern New Century says its sales forecasts for next year are up 50 percent due to the World Cup effect. Meanwhile, Xinkong Synthetic Fibers says it's received a rush order following the tournament. The company is a supplier to Nike, sponsors of World Cup runners-up France, and third place Croatia. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is one of the most diverse biomes in the world. It's home to over 1,500 species of fish, as well as marine mammals and reptiles. But climate change, pollution, and other factors are damaging the reef. Now, a team of scientists are working to save it with new cryopreservation technology. Eric Gal reports. Coral spawning in darkness. When the conditions are just right, coral release sperm and eggs into the water. This coral was removed from Australia's Great Barrier Reef so scientists could gather the released gametes. This guy even has his tentacles out, you can see him. <laughs> the reef is under grave threat from pollution and climate change. So the scientists are working to ensure the coral that makes up this amazing living structure can be preserved. The corals have just started releasing their gamete bundles and so what they're doing at the moment is collecting them from the water surface with some pipettes and we're getting them at a certain ratio, so the same amount of bundles as water in the tubes. And so that will give us the right concentration for cryopreserving the sperm and assessing the motility. Um, and then we can, we can send the eggs back for these guys to use for their uh, fertilization experiments. If the fertilization is successful, the resulting larva won't be planted in the reef immediately. Instead, they'll be frozen at nearly 200 degrees below zero. One of the reasons we want to freeze, or the technical word is cryopreserve, coral larvae is that climate change is, is, is altering our reefs. And um, if we can secure or save the biodiversity of coral and their genetic diversity, then we may have, we'll have tools for the future to really help restore the reefs. And this technology for coral reefs in the future is a real game changer. The scientists are using a new technique that they hope will help preserve more samples for the future. It's the first ever trial of this method on Great Barrier Reef coral. It's called modern mesh technology and it allows you to freeze and thaw very rapidly. And um, if you weren't using this technology, you might have to use some very sophisticated tools like a laser or other things. But this is gonna allow us to take this technology to the reef. And so the benefit of that is that we can do things faster. And if you go fast, then you can actually get that biological system to avoid crystallizing in ice on the way down or on the way back. And you can actually successfully vitrify it, which then puts it into an indefinite storage mode. Cryopreservation is just one of many programs designed to save the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists are trying out different methods because they say time is running out as climate change continues to worsen. Uh, emissions reduction is absolutely critical, but we know that it's no longer enough to protect uh, our reef from the warming that's already locked in. So we know we have a 10-year window to really make a difference. And we need to accelerate and scale up solutions that help our reef adapt, resist and recover from the impacts of climate change. And that's where innovative projects like this come in. Scientists hope this technology can help them create millions of coral, which they can eventually use to repopulate the Great Barrier Reef. Eason Pan and Eric Gao for Taiwan Plus. A new kind of folding basket has been unveiled at a low-temperature fruit and vegetable wholesaler in Taipei. 
The collapsible plastic crate, which costs about 65 U.S. cents each, is part of a drive to improve the transportation of agricultural goods and reduce losses in the supply chain. The eco-friendly product was unveiled at the opening of a refrigerated wholesale auction market. The first of its kind in Taiwan, the low-temperature warehouse will increase the shelf life of many fresh products before they reach buyers. Bird watchers in Taiwan's southeastern Taidong County were treated to a rare sight this week. A species of migratory duck that doesn't often appear in Taiwan showed up in a local river. Leslie Liao has more. Ducks, ducks, and more ducks. Mallards aren't a rare sight in East Taiwan this time of year. But bird watchers are getting worked up over this guy who's recently shown up in Taitung County. That's a falcated duck, a type that doesn't come to Taiwan often. In fact, this is the first time the birds have been spotted here in nearly 10 years. Falcated ducks come from places like northeastern China and Siberia. They tend to spend winters in areas around North Korea and Japan. But falcated ducks have been known to get lost and follow other duck species that do migrate to Taiwan, which is usually how they end up here. However, on this occasion, experts suspect that man-made changes to Taidong's agricultural landscape may have appealed to these mallards. But even though artificial alterations to the landscape have brought in the rarely seen falcated duck, this isn't necessarily a good thing for birds native to the area. Experts say that more consideration should be given to local ecology when developing farms in the area. That way, both people and animals can live in harmony with neither side crying foul. Patrick Chen and Leslie Liao for Taiwan Plus. A choir in eastern Taiwan's Hualien County is singing the praises of a local landmark. Ryan Hill Kilpatrick has the story. Liyu Lake in Hualien County. It's the east coast's biggest inland body of water. But it didn't have its own song until now. This tune was composed by a former local government official, an amateur musician called Mao Kezian. The score was unknown during Mao's lifetime. It only came to light after his death in 1993. But the Hualien Happy Family Choir is now giving it the recognition they believe it deserves. Even the composer's son was in the dark about his father's song. It may have been an obscure tune up till now, but these singers hope it will soon be heard around the lake shore and the country. Ryan Hill Kilpatrick for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's government is helping local performing arts groups keep their equipment safe. The Culture Ministry has launched a subsidy program for better storage and fire safety for theater troupe sets and props. This comes after the Paper Windmill Theater lost almost all of its equipment in a fire in 2020. The troupe suffered 1.6 million U.S. dollars in losses and almost went under. The ministry hopes the subsidy program will help prevent similar accidents in the future. Theater groups say the subsidy will be a big help. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we leave you with images of Santa Claus floating above Jerusalem in a hot air balloon. I'm Erica Liu. Take care and see you next time.